What's your minimum specification? You've said on stage in interviews in the past that you're not worried about Moore's law. You know, it, the process node side, evolution of semiconductors will, you know, eventually get worked out by someone somewhere. Would you say that your attitude towards Moore's law is apathetic? Or do you draw or, you know, trust oh, engineers no. that will work it out? Super proactive. Yeah. So, I'm <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's not apathetic at all. Like, I know a lot of details about it. Well, you, you get into these kind of, people conflate a few things. Like Intel's 10 nanometer slipped, right? And people said, oh, it's because Moore's Law is dead. But TSMC roadmap didn't slip at all, right? Now, some of that was alignment, right? TSMC's roadmap aligned to the EV machine availability. So when they went from 16 to 10 to 7, they did something, you know, and TSMC has been really good at kind of doing these half steps. So they did 7 without EV and then 7 plus with EV and then 5 with more and then 5 plus they tweak stuff. And then they, um, and the EV machines for a while, people weren't sure if they were going to work. But now ASML's market caps twice Intel's. Like, so, you know, and then there's a funny thing. I realized that the locus of innovation, like we tend to think of TSMC, Samsung, Intel as the process leaders, but a lot of the leadership is actually in the equipment manufacturers, applied materials, ASML. So who's building the innovative stuff? And EUV machines, the worldwide sales. So the number something like TSMC is going to bought like 150 uh EV machines by 2023 or something like that. Like the numbers are phenomenal because not too many years ago, people weren't even sure they're going to work. And now there's X-ray lithography coming up. And again, you can, you can say, well, it's impossible, but bloody everything has been impossible. Um, and then, you know, the fine print, this is a Richard Feynman, you know, sentence. And he was kind of smart. He said, there's lots of room at the bottom and I personally can count. And if you look at how many transistors, you know, how many atoms are across transistors, there's a lot, right? And how many transistors you actually need to make a junction without too many quantum effects is only 10. So, so there's, there's lots of room there. It's, uh, I recently put out a video about IBM's two nanometer announcement and, it, and the title was, there's a lot more room as in Gordon Moore. Yeah, a lot more room. See? So you're not apathetic either. Yeah. Well, th th there's also this funny thing. There's a belief system. When everybody believes technology is moving at this pace and the whole world oriented towards it. Because <clears throat> like technology isn't one thing. You know, there's people who figure out how to build transistors. Like, you know, what the process designers do at like Intel or TSMC or Samsung is they use the equipment which can do features, but then the features actually interact. And then there's some really interesting trade-offs between... Like, like, should how should this be deposited and etched, and how tall should it be, and wide, and what the space? So they're the, you know, the tool. They're the craftsmen using the tools. So the tools have to be super sharp, and the craftsmen have to be super knowledgeable, right? And that's a complicated play, and and there's lots of interaction. And at some level, you can see because the, the machines themselves are complicated, you have this little complexity combination where the machine manufacturers are doing different pieces. They don't always coordinate perfectly or they coordinate through the, you know, essentially the, the machine integration guys who design the process. And that, that's complicated and that can slow things down, but it's, it's not due to physics fundamentals. Like we're making good progress on physics fundamentals. And, uh, I, I put up your, I think I mentioned before your scaled ML talk where you have the one that you have in Comic Sans where you have the printed X and you say, you know, as time goes on, the way you print the X because of the laws of physics and mm -hmm. there's still several more steps to go on EUV and high NA EUV coming in a couple of years. But you mentioned yeah. X-ray. You mentioned X-ray. Yes. What's the timeline for that? It's not even on uh, my radar yet. I'm, I'm forgetting what the, the, the machines were available for commercial, some part of the, well, Typically, when a when a technology that comes along, they use it for like one thing, the first yeah. time. Like, you know, when the EUV was first used in DRAMs, it was literally for one step, or maybe mm. two. So, um, I'm trying to remember twenty three, twenty four. 
It's not that far yeah. away. That means they're already up and running and people are playing with it. Yeah. And, and then the, the wild thing is, you know, the when they went from optical light to UV, it was about a 10x reduction in wavelength. Right. And yeah. So they'd gone to these crazy multi patterning, you know, interference kind of stuff that you saw those pictures of. And then EUV, they could print direct, but actually they can use the same tricks on EUV. So EUV is going to multi patterning, I think, in three nanometer. And and then there's there's many tricks you can do with that. So, yeah, the physics is is, is really interesting. And then you know, with the, along with the physics, you know, of the optics stuff, and then there's you know the purity of the materials, which is super important, and then the temperature control, so things don't go around too much. Like everywhere you look, there's a you know interesting physics problem. And uh, but there's there's lots to do. And thousands of different innovations needed, I think. I think, I think, yeah, I remember but what you're there's literally point. hundreds of thousands of people working on it. So, you know, if every group of 10 people does an innovation, there's, there's more than enough innovation bandwidth. I mean, we've work, been working on silicon now 50 plus years fully. This full silicon paradigm has been optimized. Do you ever think about what, what's going to happen beyond silicon if we ever reach a theoretical limit within our lifetime? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, when computers started, you know, with abacuses, right? And then, yeah. you know, mechanical relays and then vacuum tubes and then transistors and integrated circuits. And, you know, now the way we build transistors, we like it's like, well, I don't know, a 12th generation transistor. They're, they're amazing. And there's more to do. The optical guys have been actually making some progress because they can... They can direct light through polysilicon and do some really interesting switching things. But that's sort of been, you know, 10 years away for, for 20 years. Yeah. But they actually seem to be making progress. The economics of biology, um, it's like 100 million times cheaper to make a complicated molecule than it is to make a transistor. Like, the, the economics are amazing. Like once you have something that can rec replicate proteins, like I, I know a company that makes proteins for a living and we did the math and it was literally a hundred million times less capital per, per molecule than we spend on transistors. Now, when you print transistors, something interesting because they're organized and connected in very sophisticated ways. Rigid. Arrays. But, you know, our bodies are self-organizing, you know, and they get the proteins exactly where they need to be. So there's something amazing about that. And there's so much room, as Feynman would say at the bottom, of how chemicals are made and organized and, you know, convinced to go a certain way. I was talking to some, some guys who were looking at doing a quantum computing startup, and they were using lasers to quiet down atoms and hold them in mm. these 2D grids. Super cool. So, you know... I think we've, you know, barely scratched the surface on what's possible. Physics is so complicated and, you know, apparently arbitrary that, you know, who the hell knows what we're going to build out of it. So, yeah, I, I think about it. Um, and, and it could be we need AI kind of computation in order to organize the atoms in ways that, you know, takes us to that next level. But, you know, the possibilities are so unbelievable. It's, it's, it's literally crazy. So, yeah, I think about that. Huh.